Hey, welcome back. This video is for the first lesson in this program. What is Agentic AI? Hopefully by the time you're seeing this video, you have gone through the lecture materials. I'm going to test your knowledge uh, about what you understand about Agentic AI. So if you haven't gone through the materials, pause the video, go up there, read through it, think critically, and then come back and then watch this video. Again, uh, I, I expect uh, that the materials are easy to understand, easy to follow. So these questions are really about getting you to think critically about uh, about the, the materials and I the reason I bring this up is it's quite easy to just read something in five minutes and feel like you understand it it's quite easy to watch video after video of some uh, course and feel like you you have understood it but really there's not much retention happening so you really have to stop and think critically about what is being said and if you agree or disagree with it and there is one someone uh, uh, someone in the data science space I forget who it is uh, once said something and I, I that resonated with me uh, he said that when you're reading a book if you agree with everything the, that the author is saying then it just means you're like a novice in the space you just haven't thought about it you don't know enough about it and so this is the first time you're thinking about it and it all makes sense so every time you're going through these materials the projects the assignments our goal is to make you think critically about the program materials so all right uh, with that said let's let's go through the questions Okay, these are going to test your understanding of Agentic AI. All right, so very first question, how is Agentic AI different from rules driven or ML systems? I hope you understand that by now uh, because it's an important thing. I brought this up before that Agentic AI is not the only tool you should have. There's many others that could be quite useful in solving problems. You wanna be known as a problem solver. So take something like rules driven systems, right? Uh, RPA, robotic process automation is used in pretty much all the all the big companies used to automate some of their mundane tasks. If someone came to you and said that some of our back office people are repeating these tasks, we would like to automate those tasks related to some paperwork, uh, some checks, audits, etc. Do you know enough to know the difference between whether that problem should be solved using RPA, robotic process automation, or whether you would use agent AI? It's important to know the difference. Same thing with ML systems. I hope this is probably an easier thing if you see a problem to know if you would solve that using a machine learning AI, traditional AI application, or you would use something a lot more complex like agentic AI. So know the difference. Okay, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the items in this lesson uh, where we were defining agents, agents or AI agents is that their ability to have, uh, to plan, decide, and to execute. So as you think about these components, these abilities we are granting on the agents, which one do you think is the hardest to achieve? Which one is most likely to cause you trouble, right? Uh, where, where, where can things go possibly wrong? This is important to know because there are certain components, certain tasks you would give to these agents that are going to be inherently hard. And so if you know them, you would put some guardrails in place for those specific tasks. And so, yeah, have you thought about this, right? When we talked about deciding, planning, executing, where is, where is the trouble <laughs> lurking behind the scenes? So think about it. And these are more general questions. Of course, they depend on the specific task. If one of the plan decide act is human led, is it still agentic? So uh, this is going to, this theme is going to come up often in this program, the involvement of humans in the loop, HITL. And pretty much every application that I've been involved in so far in developing agentic AI, I haven't felt comfortable enough to make it completely autonomous. There has been a human in the loop somewhere. And so this is not specifically getting into that, but what if you did have a human in the loop or a human doing one of these tasks, whether it's planning, deciding, acting, uh, what does that do to your system? So think about it, uh, whether it's still agentic or not, that's more of uh, a semantic thing uh, you know I don't really care about those things I just think about solving problems so anyways uh, this is something to ponder why build multi-agent systems instead of one powerful agent uh, this is probably an easier to answer question but really there are a lot of other complexities involved in here that I want you to be thinking about uh, one paradigm I my mind keeps going back to is a decade or so ago Everywhere you started hearing about microservices, so you would break an application into smaller services because you, you can manage them better. And there was a big movement towards that. And then now we are coming back to, you know, not really breaking apart systems that much, uh, not having too many microservices. And the reason is when you have these things break, broken apart like that, it's, and they are all interacting with each other, they're harder to manage, harder to test. 
Similarly, if you have multi-agent systems, you have these agents operating independently. You can test them independently well, but if you're trying to test the behavior of the entire system, it becomes harder to manage, maintain, and test. So there's some happy medium for any, any given problem where you want to know how many agents you have and how, what architectures you want to put them into. So think about that, which uh, gets into the choice of the agent architecture. So really in this, in this lesson, we try to simplify by talking about centralized versus decentralized architectures, but really it's not that clear a dichotomy. Uh, you can actually have quite uh, a really infinite number of architectures depending on your problem. Uh, but yeah, do you know enough to figure out what kind of architecture you're going to use if you're using a team of agents to solve a particular problem? Okay, I think this is the last question. In a multi-agent system, what would happen if one of the agents is a human? Um, this is this is this is not very futuristic. I, I do believe that maybe in a couple of years, maybe a year from now, uh, you you might really have such human and AI agent teams put together. Uh, maybe it's a little bit further down the line, but I really see that happening. Uh, and so when you have such humans plus AI agents combined together forming teams, what does that do uh, to the actual uh, application, right? Is it more reliable, less reliable? Is it more fair, more ethical or not? Um, you know, what does that do to the reliability and the consistency of the system? And there's a lot of other other complex complexities involved in such, such systems. So, Anyways, this is, these are some of the, uh, the considerations that you should have in your mind. Again, as I said, it's very easy to just read a document and feel like you've thought it through, but you have to stop and really critically engage with the material. Otherwise, there's not gonna be that much retention in your brain. Two weeks later, you would have forgotten what you read. So that's it for this lecture. Thank you.